hide all the insecurities. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. <laughs> Will's got jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. I love beer. I like that too. Pork broccoli. Snowflake. Hail Baphomet. Thank you guys for listening. I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Hey guys. Welcome <laughs> to the. <laughs> Welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Feeling that energy. I didn't want to fake it. <laughs> so, we're here. We're happy to be here. What do you, Josh and Will, what are you guys doing? You want to do a, a show? Hey, that's a, that's a great, that's a <laughs> damn good idea. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve. <laughs> I am your uh, host, Jimmy Putnam. What do I usually do next? I usually introduce you guys. Uh, with me is <laughs> my, I'm sorry, man, is my co-host, Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. And sidekick in charge of energy, Will Doherty. I'm bringing it up, and that's not a position I like to be in. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us today, uh, last minute replacement, but very special guest, no less special for the way she got onto the show. <laughs> Is uh, she's new to the comedy scene? The very funny Jordan Klein. Hello, Jordan Klein. Hey, Hello, Jimmy. Hey. Hey, Josh. Yeah, you're hey, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, you got woofs and fist bumps <laughs> all day. Jordan, how you doing? Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, the last two guys canceled on you. Yeah, well. <laughs> One, I can't believe we're just telling the truth about everything now. It's my le It's my worst quality. <laughs> it's my honesty. <laughs> my honesty. Yeah. Right, that's the opposite of what the phrase is normally. Some said. guy some guys go to bars on a Monday night like trolling for tail. I go trolling for podcast guests. That's what I <laughs> that's what I was doing at the bar last night. And uh this is the one I came home with. So uh <laughs> thanks hey, for boys. And now that and now that I, we're I've been making this progressively weirder and weirder, <laughs> haven't I? <Yeah. laughs> It got real you weird real quick. <laughs> Jordan, you're new to the comedy scene. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Grand Island, Nebraska. Grand Island, Nebraska, and, and you moved to Lincoln when? Uh, the last July. And you just started doing stand-up? Uh, I started, like, in February. That's all. Yeah, I see. Mm. <laughs> After I saw you guys at Dugan's Beer. that one night. Oh, oh right. I remember the that now, night. The now defunct Dugan's Pub. Is that really, like, the first time you tried stand-up? Like, like, I've seen you do stand-up for the first few times. Because you're well, really good right away, and people like you, and you get laughs, which is hateable. It's a hateable quality. <laughs> More surprisingly is that you saw us at Dugan's for the first time, and it was like, that looks like fun. I want to do that. Yeah. It the, was me and my coworker, just super shit-faced. Yeah, Let's go were. check out comedy. Oh, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I called Will Jonah Hill, and he goes, okay, also Jonah Hill. And I was right. like, all right. <laughs> all right. That was, I deserve that. Before or after. <laughs> And he was like, after. Or no, you said before. So that's amazing. Here I am on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I like at Dugan's. You you were super shit faced, <laughs> and we hit it off pretty quick. And you were just like, "You think I should go up there?" And I'm just like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad I did it. I'm oh like, man! I'm like, get get ha you know, prepare like three minutes, and then and then I told you about Duffy's. Come to Duffy's, and then you did that, and you did great. Yeah. Thanks. So I, I might I don't know if I should be saying this on the air or or who it'll get back to, but my I I just Friday night my best friend Adam Carey from Kansas City was in town and we were hanging out and kind of towards the end of the night uh, he goes you know I just wanted to ask you something my wife is thinking about trying stand up and just before I could control myself I was just like no tell her not to. <laughs> Like, I was like, don't let her do that. It is the worst. No. Like, it'll be horrible. <laughs> it's going to be horrible. And then, like, I don't know. She could probably do it. She's she's very personable, and she could probably put together a pretty hilarious five minutes. But no, yeah, to no. go through. If anybody asks you, should I do comedy? No. If you're a decent person, you should be like, you don't want this for yourself. This isn't a good, happy life for a fun-loving group no. of people. This is 
like collectively the tears of a clown. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like Jordan. Jordan was a lot like me when I first started. I don't know about you guys, but like I didn't want anybody there that I knew. Fuck no. You know what I mean? Right. Like a lot of a lot of people, I noticed that they'll bring a lot of friends, like you said, but like not me. Like I didn't even tell my own wife for like six months. <laughs> you didn't that tell I was, your wife? Like, yeah, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't want to do bad. Like it made me more nervous, you know. Like I didn't give us. I didn't give a fuck <laughs> as much about like doing comedy in front of people I didn't know, because who cares? It eased my. It eased me a little bit, but uh, like doing comedy for like people, my friends and family. So I didn't something know, to I, overcome. What made you want to do this? What keeps you coming back? That's a good question. I, you know, some nights go pretty not well, and that's really discouraging. But, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I have fun with it. It's fun. It's it's like a hobby now. I, I do things. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> oh, oh, can't hang out. I have to go to Duffy's on Monday night, so. <laughs> right. Man, I, I uh, I, I think about Jordan is like Jordan. You you look at her and she starts her set off and you wouldn't imagine it, but she gets pretty hood rat shit in her fucking. I'm from Grand Island, like <laughs> Beth Beth City, bitch. Like I, you wouldn't I'm imagine it because I feel like it's right there on the surface. Oh really? No. I don't know. I could be crazy. <laughs> So, you really think I get kind of ghetto on stage? Is that what you're saying? I, I've never realized Not that. Not me. I don't think that. I'm wearing, a I'm wearing a taco shirt and I have a Jufro. I am the least. Mm, okay, yeah. it's Cinco de Drinko day, but I wear this like, <laughs> Oh, that's well, nice. Well, more than today. <laughs> it's like, I wear it's it, your like, Tuesday like, shirt. Tuesday. <laughs> everyone's like, nice shirt. Or they're like, nice shirt, you ass clown. Like, <laughs> I just look like a 12-year-old like with this shirt and this hair. I thought it was a lesbian reference. So. Yeah, so does my boss. She likes to make his lots of jokes about that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get enough of them tacos, can you? Like, no. Oh, I, I hope... just I just finally today got to the end of my uh, car accident insurance bullshit. Like, finally, I got the call today that said they had established that the other driver was 100% at fault. But it took me, like, making lots of phone calls over three days and, like, arguing with people and screaming at them and complaining about things. Dude, it was exhausting. But you won. No, I won. See... Ugh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> I, I feel I, like I you... started talking about my car accident instead of interviewing our guest. Well, you I mean you you took yes. that. I'm fucking so scatterbrained right now. <laughs> you seem to like take that really hard, but I feel like you normally like glory in defeating your enemies. Oh no! Like, For me, there's no. I I don't celebrate victories really. For me, <laughs> I only wallow in defeats. I, it's true. Like. <laughs> That's a weird thing about me uh, is even when I was, like, playing sports and stuff, when I would win a game, like, I would never feel, like, joy at winning. It was just more a relief that I didn't lose. I, I've always hated losing at things. This and is a really deep podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Comedy's depressing. Sports was depressing. It, yeah. get, it gets real sad sometimes. Real sad yeah. Hard. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is driven by me, so... Jordan, I do feel like a lot of your stand-up that you do so far is about your sexual orientation, which is gay. <laughs> and, uh, you, well, you, yeah. Did I did I say that? You too? simultaneously <laughs> said that literally and as the slur. Yep. Your sexual orientation is so gay. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really mean did. to. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Because it was um, hilarious. Mm. Not just any lesbian, though. Let's be honest. Oh. You're a lesbian in Lincoln, Nebraska. Lucky you. Well, I, I feel oh, like hell yeah. I feel like you. <laughs> I have a I have a question I that have... I wanted to ask because okay. I it, this was just an awkward thing relating to what we were talking about. My wife Serenity, who was back in town, uh, just came out to Duffy's like the last couple weeks, and you were at the open mic. And uh, since you were newer, like, she's she's been around the comedy scene for a while, but then she was off in Michigan going to school, and she just got back. Now, since you were new, I introduced you to my wife, and I think when I did that, kind of as a reference to the way you handle yourself on stage, uh, like you said, like, you announce it, I think I introduced you to Serena by going, this is our new friend, Jordan, mm -hmm. she's a lesbian. <laughs> you really did, you did. I did, yeah, I did that, and then, Ser like, she didn't, like, make a big deal out of it, but she kind of chided me a little bit for doing that. <laughs> like, she just kind of rolled her eyes at me and said, like, are we introducing people by their sexuality now? 
She does it herself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I like to announce usually at the beginning of my show that I'm a lesbian, just so for everybody else that uh, didn't know I was a chick is like on the same page. Because if right. you don't know I'm a lesbian right off the bat, it's just going to be a really confusing set. Jordan, <laughs> I assume that you... Part of the reasons why why you left Grand Island was probably because it's not easy to be a lesbian in Grand Li- Grand Island. Then I also realized like it sucks to live in Grand Island. <laughs> well, that and I had a really bad meth addiction. I yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just mething with you, Josh. Okay. <laughs> I, Grand Island's just shitty. I was working at a truck stop. The Bosleman trucks truck stop. A little Caesars and Subway. Me and Will talked about this one night. <laughs> yeah. This one I mean, they were just these truckers that were like just assholes and didn't have any communication for like twenty hours at a time. And so they'd come in and either be really rude or really like sexual. Yeah, it was either one or the other. And this guy comes in once and goes, I wanna make ball sandwich. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I wanna fucking make ball sandwich and just shit like that happened all the time. So I moved. I mean, in my defense, I was really in the mood for a meatball sandwich <laughs> on that particular <laughs> night, and I was tired, and I didn't want to explain myself. I'm sorry. That's what they say about Grand Island. Gr- neither grand nor an island, right? <laughs> so misleading. <laughs> Come for the meatball sandwiches. <laughs> Stay for the casual homophobia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't even get me started. The gay people there, all oh, the selection of being gay too is just like the worst. It's like slim pickings, huh? Slim pickings, yeah, mm. definitely. There's like seven lesbians in Grand Island. Probably one of them's attractive, uh, and she's not no, really a lesbian, so it doesn't even count. Uh, <laughs> then it's really, it was really thoughtful of you to move because now, Talk. if you moved, now there's six and there's an even number again. <laughs> so now it's fine. She's over me. <laughs> Calm down. Now there's just three pairs, and whenever somebody, like two couples, can break up at the same time and switch, <laughs> nice. it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and lesbians do that. They're like engaged after like two months, and then it's off, and then they fuck somebody else, and then they're back, and it's just. Right, but then uh, if they get engaged, that's just a, that's just a young person well, thing. That's not anyways. a lesbian thing. That's a nah. oh, right. I don't know. Do you have any questions for us? <laughs> well, <laughs> do you have, do you have, do you have, let's let's turn this interview on its ass. Would you do? You, would you like to know what the straight white male experience is all about? <laughs> you I'm could sure either, mine is kind of similar. You could either <laughs> ask us a question or. Watch any piece of media. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on to something more fun. Let's we we drafted impressions that we were going to do last week. So we each picked five impressions that we were going to do, and let's let's break those out right now. And Jordan, if you would like to, you can. Do you want to grade us? Do you want to grade each impression? I definitely do. What? And I'll let you create your own scale. I'm going to use percentages. Percentages? Yep. Okay, the percentage that we represent that actually the person that we're trying to uh, impersonate. Yeah. Perfect. And up first, in this corner, weighing in at an estimated 500 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and, do it. and he is wearing the flesh colored trunks. He hails from Coconut Creek, Florida. He is, he is the lumbering dervish. <laughs> <laughs> With his first impression, Will Doherty! Alright, who are you doing? Uh, okay, I am only 500 pounds if you're rounding to the nearest 500. <laughs> Alright, wait, wait, hold on, I'm gonna do My first impression is David Crosby eating a McRib. Okay, David Crosby eating a McRib, I'm excited for this one. Okay, I'm not, I did, I'm doing this first because it's my worst one, because I didn't know who David Crosby was. I, just, I knew he was like some old rocker, so I assumed he sounded like, a, a, I'd assume a lot of old rockers would, which is like the classic like 40-year smoker. Right, like, right. Like, hey, man. Yeah, yeah. His lungs black. No. Essentially he's, Neil Young. He's just a, he just has a weird, slightly high-pitched voice. Okay. Anyway, okay. But, I get, but he has to be eating a McRib. <laughs> I'm really focusing on the eating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is very McRibby. That... <laughs> so far, nailed it. That... Oh, that. <laughs> I know, he, just, he was just going to get. Wait, I love where this is going. He was just about to get real, real homophobic. <laughs> I don't need to do that. That is a delicious McRib. That's just 
the 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 delicate way that the the delicate way that the barbecue sauce plays off of the onions and the and the pickles it all it all really comes together in quite a a, a whole package really like the the whole is really greater than the sum of its parts on that McRib. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of you you got it was kind of a southern yeah a little bit nice all right what do you think Jordan I don't know who David Crosby is not uh, relevant to the grading scale but I felt like <laughs> it's not maybe you've heard of a little that. band called Crosby Stills Nash and Young he's the Crosby part <laughs> he's the Crosby part. wait was Young Neil like... Young yes wow I must have subconsciously put that together somehow it was Crosby Stills and, and Nash. Nash. No, and yeah, then, I specifically then, said the stupid one. Yeah, and right. then Young joined and then quit. <laughs> right. I feel like that McRib impression was more like you and your McRib impression. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like when you look at a McRib, you would think that. I do. I have a lot but, of strong opinions about McRibs. I do, too. <laughs> and <laughs> I would give you, I'm going to give you an 89%. Whoa, that's really good. Yes. That's B plus. way more than I would give you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought it was pretty good. I liked it. Like, I didn't. I didn't think there was going to be any kind of a... T- I'll, I'll tell you right now that that was better than anything I'm going to do. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I'm up next. I'll introduce myself. And the uh, challenger in this corner, me. Okay. That's all I'm giving myself. <laughs> Why don't you tell him how much you weigh, Jimmy? <laughs> An estimated 245 lean muscular pounds of rippling sexuality. That's uh, <laughs> not. It got real dumb. Uh, <laughs> oh. I'm, 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 I'm weirdly less and less proud of every consecutive thing I say tonight. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm sh- proud of rippling sexuality. <laughs> All right, so uh, Shaquille O'Neal. I didn't prepare what they will be talking about, so uh, this will just be Shaquille O'Neal talking about basketball. The problem with today's centers in the NBA is that none of them play with their back to the basket. Oh my God. When I was playing, there were only three great centers. David Robinson, Shaquille O'Neal, and also Shaquille O'Neal. Everybody today <laughs> plays pick and pop. And that ain't how you play basketball. <laughs> That's all I got. That's the best I got. That's the best I got. It sounded like Shaq. If he was like alive during slavery. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! (laughs) Do you, Jimmy? Jimmy, this is a very important question. (laughs) Pull yourself together. I have to ask you a question. Uh. Do you know any lines from Roots? (laughs) Oh god! All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you feed me one, I can... Uh, no, I don't. Um, okay, so yeah. after that, um, I mean, I I saw it. It sounded like Shaq, but with the slave, I'm going to have to bump you down. I'm going to go Fair. with 77. That's very good. I'm super <laughs> you pleased should feel with... Lucky. I'm super pleased with that. Uh, 12 years as center. <laughs> <laughs> Way to lose the brown audience. <laughs> <laughs> and our final contender in this corner from parts unknown. <laughs> his height and weight a mis- as mysterious as his origins. <laughs> he is the man with no nickname, uh, Joshua Bossler. <laughs> wow, thank you. What do you got? I'm starting off with my worst, hardest one to do, which is Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. <clears throat> <Okay>. Super hard. <laughs> you know, man, it's like everybody thinks that all I do in movies, man, is just say man. Man. It's kind of true. And then I actually got into a movie called Iron Man, man. (laughs) So sometimes things just work out, man. (laughs) That's good. That sounded like Jeff Bridges doing an impression of Randy Newman. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I know. It was bad. (laughs) 
Uh, let's go to the judge. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with an 84. Wow. All right. I'll take I, that. You know, honestly, then. I'm just pulling his percentages. I don't know. <laughs> I'll take like, it. I don't know who David Crosby is. I don't know. Right. So, I mean, yeah, who I mean, yours was? <laughs> it was. It was almost the dude. You almost did the dude. Yeah, if you ever hear him like in interviews and stuff, though, he's basically like that. Yeah. He's basically the dude. He's right like on. kind of a totally hippie kind of pothead yeah. country singer. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, Will, what's up next? Uh, next one I've got is uh, Paul Giamatti. Ooh. The, yeah, this was I, – I made a bad choice on this one. <laughs> I drafted this one and I shouldn't have done it. I thought he was a sad sack. I thought it would be relatable that I could, like, embrace it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an impression of James Adomian doing Paul Giamatti. Perfect. Oh, he'd like – oh, <laughs> Jesus – uh, I feel like I've got something in my throat now. Oh, you want me to read the back of the Gatorade bottle? Well, well, that's great. Oh, another fantastic job for Paul Giamatti. Oh, boy, how much am I getting paid for this commercial? Jesus Christ, I won an Oscar. I didn't actually win an Oscar. <laughs> have I won an Oscar? I feel like I would have. I get confused sometimes. What I like about Will's impression... Uh, never mind, sorry. Oh, you might as well say it now. <laughs> Let's go to the judge. We're all here, Jimmy. You're telling the truth today. <laughs> Oh my god, that made me cry like a little bitch. <laughs> like I'm, I, I'm gonna go with a 94. Oh, 96. It, so, it sounded Man, nothing like it sounded nothing like Paul Giamatti, but it it definitely didn't sound like Will. Like it, <laughs> yeah. he's doing a lot. Like Will's put more effort into this than any either of us, which is great. Like, um, I guess I'll try Michael Keaton next, and like Michael Keaton also doesn't sound like anything. So I just pulled up some quotes from Beetlejuice, <laughs> and I'll and I'll try and I was gonna try and do Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. Have you seen Beetlejuice, Jordan? I've seen Beetlejuice. All right. So, ah, well, uh, I attended Juilliard. Uh, I'm a graduate of Harvard Business School. Uh, traveled quite extensively. <laughs> uh, lived through the Black Plague and had a pretty good time doing that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. You think I'm qualified? <laughs> That's a, okay. That was a solid Beetle that was solid. Yes, it was. I'm going to give you a 90... Ooh! 1%. Love it. Ooh. Good enough. That's, Ooh. That's, Ooh. That's great. All right, my next one is Larry King. He's the controversial host of the fastest growing <laughs> podcast in Nebraska. He does everything to do with local comedy, and if you ask him, he's bad at all of them. Jimmy Putnam tonight on the Larry King Live Show. <laughs> oh, I liked that because I heard my name in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give that like a 97. Nice. Thank you. Go ahead, Will. Okay. So this is going to be another tough one. Uh, this is Vin Diesel. And like you, I decided to go to like the movie that I felt like I could imitate, like your Beetlejuice. Mm -hmm. So I did Vin Diesel in, I think, one of his strongest roles, <laughs> his role in Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, he was, he he was, was Groot. Groot. Right. And, yeah. So this is my, I'm going to do, I'm so, I took a line, uh, I took one of his famous lines. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Gotta get the rasp in it if you're going to mm -hmm. do diesel. I am Groot. Do you want an Still there. Do you want an effect? <laughs> oh, that's cheating. Yeah, that is, that is cheating a little bit. Oh, okay. I, no, I'm. Jimmy, do I seem like I wouldn't be okay with cheating? <laughs> do it anyway. Vin Diesel, I don't know that's, that's no. Fast and Furious, yeah. right? If you want to, yeah. You have to make it like um, Vin Diesel, I, I, I feel like if you want to do Vin Diesel, it's just, it's deep and it's a little bit slow. Uh, like if you're going to key on something with Vin Diesel, like with every impression, you got to find something to key on. And I feel like with Vin Diesel, it's just that you can hear the individual clicks that his throat is making as he talks. <laughs> yeah, his voice is just this sound. 
<laughs> you explaining that, you're a way better actor than Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. I'm going to. Hold on, let me try one more. I'm kind of mixed up uh, from the shack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, that's that's pretty that's pretty accurate. I'm gonna give you, well, I'm gonna give you an 88. Oh, very I'm gonna solid. Give you an 88. That's that's better than I deserved. This is my friend Jeff's neighbor Vince. Hey Jeff, close your windows when you're walking around naked. Nobody wants to see that. Oh my God, Vince? Is he from Queens? Wait, oh. Jimmy! It's... Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, I was doing an I'm impression sorry. of Jeff's neighbor Vince. I thought I, so oh, I was... thought he was I thought he was in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, so I'm gonna slip back into it here. <laughs> That's what Vince said. A, a G- <laughs> <laughs> Nope, it's too stupid. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Um, no, that's grade not applicable on that one. I don't need to get my... <laughs> no comedian left behind. I'll just yeah. give you a 50 on that. Perfect. So my next one is Clint Eastwood. So I just lifted the famous Dirty Harry uh, scene. I know what you're thinking, punk. You're thinking, did he fire six shots or only five? Now to tell you the truth, I forgot myself in all this excitement. But being this a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and will blow your head clean off, you gotta ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? You know, I, I love the movie The Batman, but I really want to hear your Clint Eastwood impression. <laughs> that was, was that too whispery? Try to put your luck in it. I know what you're thinking, punk. You're thinking, did he fire six shots or only five? Now to tell you the truth, I forgot myself in all this excitement. But this being a 45, 44 Magnum and the most powerful handgun in the world and will blow your head clean off, you gotta ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Or do you, punk? I just love how much you're moving your head. <laughs> That's a, like you're shaking. <laughs> can, I, can I take a shot at Clint Eastwood? Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> Let me grade can him I get first. Can I get yeah, graded first? Um, yeah. That was actually really good. That sounded just like him. I'm sorry for the Batman comment. It's okay. It only made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we here? This is all just sad. Well, okay. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a ninety. I already used ninety four. Ninety two percent. Thank you. We can't You're hit welcome. the same number twice. No. <laughs> no. Nope. Except for sixty nine. That's just. Can I? Can I take a shot at Clint Eastwood? Clint Eastwood is old. <laughs> All right, you go and Hey, I'll... talk to a chair, lonely. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know the dance you're doing, but it's 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 fantastic. Just taking shots at Clint Eastwood. No, that was good. Will you're up next. What do you got? I have uh beloved TV personality John Oliver. John Oliver. Does he have anything to say on the Jimmy Putnam <laughs> podcast? I suppose that he might. It's a British accent. It's very well spoken, though. That's the difference, because I have two British accents to do. I have John Oliver and I have Russell Brand, and I feel like the difference is that John Oliver has impeccable... I cannot speak. <laughs> I was trying to say the sentence that he has impeccable diction. And I fucked that up, <laughs> which is an ironic sentence to say incorrectly. <laughs> it is so ironic. It's literally the opposite of what I was trying to say when I said it. Your body motions were very John Oliver-y. <laughs> like, the way you were, like, bouncing and pointing, like, that's very, that's good. It's Judges? Nice touch. Okay, I would, I'm going to give you a 90, sorry, you said 98. Oh! Uh, okay, my next one. This is absolutely impossible. There's no way I can do this, but I drafted Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. So I'm just going to try. I'm just going to try and do. I'm just going to do the best I can, and we'll see. Okay, so. 
So, I feel like doing impressions is really hard, but I'm doing the best I can, and I'm doing everything I can. I'm putting everything into it, but now I'm here, on the spot, and everyone's looking at me, and everyone's making fun of me, and I don't know what I'm going to do. So, I, I'm just some kind of B-list celebrity, but I'm going to try my best, and do all the impressions I can, and hopefully everyone will like them, but maybe they won't. I don't know. I'm just going to do my best. That's... That's like a 99. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. High like score. It. Wow. I, ugh. For not having a female voice, that was pretty impressive. I started I sweating it. during that. So this one is uh, Edwin. And so I wrote an, Ed, an Edwin-type joke for okay. it as well. <clears throat> nice. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm swarming up. <laughs> I noticed these days that people have what they call cell phones, you know. Nothing new, though. Back in my day, you had a st if you had a store, you could sell phones. <laughs> a phone store, you see. <laughs> That's great. That's like a hundred. Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> I fucked the joke up. The facial expressions with it? I mean, there's a lot of practice put into that. I got super drunk and just watched... Endless amounts of Ed Wynn videos on YouTube. <laughs> really? And I fell in love with him. <laughs> fell in love with him. Yeah. Big fan. Nice. Sorry. And now that will be how you spend your weekends from now until when you die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we were Mar – Mary and I just went to see uh, Brian Regan, who's my favorite comedian. And I, I think I said this on last week's show that, like, I've been finding myself doing a Brian Regan impression just, like – subconsciously just all the time we slip into it and now mary started doing it too like <laughs> we were driving on i-80 between lincoln and omaha and uh a car started you know crossing over the the line into our lane and mary just goes watch out for this car he's a floater <laughs> <laughs> Did you know you just did a Brian Regan impression and she was like, what? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, we're in the final round, so <clears throat> we've all got one left. Uh, Will, who do you got left? All right. Uh, my Ooh. my final impression, the, the big finale, the one I was saving for the end, Mr. Russell Brand. All right. Now, I, wanted, I want bonus points. Because I had to do two different distinguishable British accents. If you can do Russell Brand, I will give you extra credit. Yes, that's all I wanted. Okay, and now and the 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 uh, term on the suggestion board it was Russell Brand eating an omelet. That was the rule. Eating a veggie omelet. A veggie omelet. Oh, I already forgotten. I already it's fucked right, up the right, rules. No worries. So, so it's just in my head. It was a ham and sausage omelet. <laughs> right, like, like right. it's going to completely... F okay. Right. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Russell Brand eating a veggie omelet. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a good omelet, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's delicious. I mean, who could want a better omelet than that? Is it... It's just, it's one of the best omelets I've ever eaten. I mean, it's, it's, it's got all them veggies in there. It's no meat, though. Obviously, I wouldn't eat meat. Russell Brand? Russell Brand isn't eating meat, is he? No. Russell Brand's eating veggies. It's good for you. Makes you strong. Grow up strong. Eating eat veggies. Isn't that what they say? Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> it went from, like, you guys have seen Forgetting Sarah Marshall, where he does that, yeah. Jonah Hill does that impression, and then you, it just all, it tied perfectly together, and then all of a sudden, it, things just got Irish. <laughs> at the end, it came in the beginning. No. It came a little bit Irish. It came a little bit Irish at the end. Oh. Why are you eating a veggie omelet? <laughs> no, but that was really good. Hey. I'm going to give you 100, and then I want a tiebreaker. Yeah, so, so, you know, the difference uh, between, because I, I can't do different British dialects because I don't know English <laughs> like like that right. well, mm. but I knew the difference between Russell Brand and John Oliver is that Russell Brand, or like John Oliver says, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. And Russell Brand says, in it. In it, yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. yeah. No, that was real good. That was funny. Nice. All right. My... Final impression, and I hesitate to call anything I've done an impression, 
is Morgan Freeman. <laughs> when Andy Dufresne came to show. <laughs> Uh, hold on. I'm not now. The March of the Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> the the march the March of the Penguins is a trail as old as. <laughs> uh, that's that's gonna be it. I can't get out of sentence. What? All right, you want to try? All right, all right here. Hold on. I want to. I want to hear you. Were, you had something ready with the um, Shawshank. You you know it. <laughs> when Andy Dufresne came to Shawshank Penitentiary in 1954, I don't remember what year it was. I didn't think much of him, but that was then, and this is now. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh God damn it! That's it for me. I can't do this. Give me my grade, Judge. I thought it was really good. Oh, thanks. I really did. I'm going to give you a 97. Oh, wow. Well, you're too kind. <laughs> I know. You're too kind. All right. Mine is, my last one is Jigsaw from the movie, the Saw movies. All right. Hello, William. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello, William. You don't know me, but I know you. I want to play a game. Right now, poison is coursing through your veins. And what I mean by that is severely high levels of cholesterol <laughs> in your blood. <laughs> you have a choice. Across from you are two plates. One is the antidote, a plate of raw, fibrous spinach rich in antioxidant. Veggie omelet. <laughs> Not only will this plate extend your life, but will provide you with the key to release the device from Jimmy's neck. <laughs> oh, oh, shit! Your other choice, the not-yet-released Nintendo NX and a plate of approximately 30 Taco Bell beefy... <laughs> Taco Bell beefy five-layer burritos I'm without I'm definitely sour cream. going to die! <laughs> You have 30 seconds. I am for sure going to die in this scenario. Yeah. <laughs> the NX is unreal. I mean, I'm getting it before launch. <laughs> nah, I wasn't all that attached to having it anyway. Sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't get into character. Hold on. This is me eating the 30 burritos. I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> oh. Okay, so the impression contest uh it's in the books. Wait, was there a winner? I didn't tell I didn't tally the scores. I I didn't do the math. I didn't average <laughs> percentages. Just point at someone. You I need closure. You picked the hardest scoring method, I think, like percentages. <laughs> What's the one that made me cry like a bitch? I think that was Wills. I don't remember which one it was. Though. I don't either. <clears throat> oh, was it Paul Giamatti? <laughs> was do you it... have them written on your hand? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Is it oh, like boy. Paul Giamatti's <laughs> the big <laughs> winner. <laughs> well, congratulations right. to me. <laughs> All right. Will wins. All right. Let's do some news. Joshua. 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 Bossler. News. Hello, everybody. Hey, China. Nice erection. <laughs> China just built a 57-story skyscraper in 19 days. <laughs> the building has 19 atriums, office space for 4,000 workers, uh, and 800 apartments. Uh, now, they did, to clarify, they used a modular process, which allowed them to construct, allowed construction workers to put together three floors a day. Um, the 2,700 plus modules were created over nearly five months and then assembled into a skyscraper, much like Legos. <laughs> right. Can I hear that news story again as Jigsaw? <laughs> Hello, China. <laughs> I want to play a game. <clears throat> oh, by the way. Nice erection. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, so this, so like, yeah, so 
19 days to how tall was it it is uh 57 stories there's no way that can be safe right uh actually um the everybody involved and the people in china nobody were concerned necessarily of safety concerns they said it's like earthquake proof and everything the the what they were worried about the most was um that it was very cookie cutter looking you know what I mean? Right. And that they, they were more concerned about if we start building more modular buildings, they're all going to look the same and they're going to have no character to them. Uh, also outfitted in the in the building is uh, like a circulation system that allows uh, 100% like clean air from the outside air, which is a big oh, yeah. deal. That 100% clean Chinese air we're all so familiar with. <laughs> or whatever. With. It had some sort of like <laughs> ventilation system which uh, right. filtered out the outside air from the inside <laughs> air. And and made the air whatever. There's a video. There's kind of a cool video of it online. You can find everywhere. There's no the way video. that a building that goes up that fast can be can can be safe, right? Well, it's not even it's not even because it went up that fast. It's just because nothing that's ever made in China lasts that long. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys noticed how shitty the highways in Nebraska are? Yeah, that's what I thought when I read this. I was just like, it took how long to you know, do a certain road. You know what I mean? It's just it, it, insane. It, it, to I pour concrete and flatten it out. They, they just okay. So I eighty that travels between Lincoln and Omaha. Like for the last several years, they've been redoing that whole thing, expanding it, adding another lane, and it is a piece of shit highway. The whole thing is bumpy as fuck. Like it's not smooth. We we just drove to Des Moines um, last weekend. And the second that you cross over from Nebraska into Des Moines, the highway smooths right out. And it, and so I don't know what they did, but when they expanded those highways, they they did a terrible job because they you know if you don't if you don't do that right, if you don't engineer it right, if you don't pour the concrete right, it doesn't settle correctly, and it gets bumpy, and it it's I don't know. Probably all those kickbacks from the brake and suspension lobby. It's I don't know. It's the it's the, it's the the Chinese high rise of highways. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm relating these two things. I just thought okay. of shitty construction. And I can I can I tell you something that like that I thought I thought ill of you at the beginning of that story. Okay, <laughs> permission I was, granted. I was a hundred percent positive that was going to be a story about Chinese politics. And I'll tell you why. Because I thought you were doing, like, the sentence, nice erection, in a, like, <laughs> 19... <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Oh. Well, let, and, let, no, and you but, didn't. You know and what? you weren't doing that. And just, and I let me say to you... Me so solly. <laughs> oh no! That was reluctantly funny. <laughs> you got another story? Yeah. Uh, just when the taste of Bud Light was not offensive enough, they started with their slogans. After an online outcry, Bud Light has uh, ditched a slogan that more than a few critics described as rapey. As part of <laughs> as part of the beers, quote unquote. Hold on, hold on. Can we all take a guess? Sure. <laughs> Bud Light. Close your eyes and just let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Will? <laughs> Bud Light. Struggling will only make it harder. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> Don't want to participate in this? I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of a rapey joke right now for Bud Light. <laughs> okay. Right. I'm pretty sure Bud Light's the number one rape drink. Think about it. Actually, that could be their slogan. <laughs> number one. Bud, <laughs> number one rape drink. Bud, there you go. Bud Light. Five, five million date rapists can't be wrong. Bud Light, she just might. Bud Light, she just might. This is terrible. <laughs> as part of the... Are we going to keep going? No, you okay. finish the, Please. As, finish as part of the beer's quote-unquote... Up for whatever campaign, some bottles were stamped with the slogan, the perfect beer for removing no from your vocabulary for the night. Oh, that's worse oh, than anything we said. 
Critics <laughs> accused the company of showing an epic lack of understanding of the dangers associated with excessive alcohol consumption, such as sexual assault and drunk driving. In a statement, a Bud Light, uh, Bud Light, or a Bud Light executive said the message missed the mark, and the company regrets it. The company says no more bottles will be produced with the slogan. Yeah, I mean that's it. Really, that's a collector's item. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. No, yeah, I mean if no isn't in your vocabulary, then the slogan "No means no" still doesn't mean anything to you. Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, the the no means no would just be means. <laughs> I, <laughs> Let's go ahead and you guys ready to bring this one home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just made a, you just made a sound that I I didn't know how to interpret that. It was like a pirate. I, like, was I, like, I was like, you guys ready to bring this one home? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just silence. <laughs> nah, she. Yeah. Oh, there's my there's my 40s Chicago gangster 20s. When was Al Capone ready after? to what bring era? this one home, <clears throat> boy? That's right. <laughs> Uh, let's do plugs. Jordan. <laughs> what, what plugs? What, what's what, coming up? Where where can people find you? Are you on do you have any are you doing any shows coming up? Um yeah, I'm going to be at the back line on Friday. Power hour. Power hour. Yeah, it's my awesome. first time. Well, I went there. Is for it on a Friday month. that you're doing it? Yeah. Yep. Cool. I'll be there Friday too. Oh, will you? Yeah, I'm in interrogated at the ten o'clock. Oh, I'm at nine o'clock. Sweet. Uh, 1618 Harney Street, Omaha, Nebraska, 9 p.m. Friday night, which, if you were listening to this on the day it drops, is tomorrow. Will? Nope. Josh? Nah. Uh, I'll be on Doom Room Thursday at the hideout. But hey, you know what, guys? Thanks for working through this one with us. This was not, <laughs> this was not an easy show for me. Jimmy's had kind of a rough week. Somebody wrap this one up for me. I would just like to apologize to my family and friends and my boss that's going to listen to this. <laughs> Do you remember at the beginning? She's going to listen to this. And I would just like to apologize. Well, this just, is... it's my fault. No, my mom is going to be <laughs> so pissed when she hears this. Why? She doesn't know you're a lesbian. <laughs> oh, she definitely knows. I know. But I was joking. Her humor is like Jack. Have you seen Jack and Jill, the Adam Sandler movie? Oh, that's her please, favorite no. movie. Oh, so no. So just think about how devastated she's going to be when she realizes. Well, I I can do nothing for you. I bet you. she's really going to love that Ed Wynn bit, though. <laughs> 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 just really try to key on that. All right. Yeah, that and Morgan Freeman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joshua and Will, somebody wrap this one up for me. Go for it, Will. All right, well, as the sidekick, side I feel kick. like I got to jump in here. This is my place. <laughs> so, uh, hey, everybody, uh, this has been our episode. I want to thank our uh, special guest, uh, Jordan, uh, is here. It's like, hey, let's uh, do it. Thank you. Hey, I thought we were going to do the drop. We didn't. That's fine. We what, don't have to. What drop? The, the little happy claps drop. It's okay. We don't have to do it. Yeah, you're on the show. Hey, 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 all right, and uh, for the main host, uh, Jimmy Putnam, mm. uh, for uh, co-host Joshua Vossler. Don't forget to spray the new to your pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I should have done one of my voices when you threw it to me, so do it. Okay, to... uh, for the main host, Jimmy Putnam. It's an honor to be here hosting the podcast. <laughs> I feel like I really posted it up. <laughs> No, that you was a really, disaster. I should have tried it. You were really it. facing away from the basket on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But back to the basket. All right. that, was, that was a mistake. And uh, now everything I, I do is a mistake. That's a good one. Including <laughs> that's a drop. <laughs> uh, uh, and since I have to finish it once again for uh, for the co-host uh, Joshua Vossler, stop pointing at me. <laughs> I have been your sidekick, Will Doherty. We we did her. All right. All Jesus right. Christ. If you're going to let me do this, let me do this, Jimmy. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like, we're going to, uh, we're going to close it out uh, with a, a song from a good friend of mine. Her name is Emily Ward. She's a singer songwriter. She plays the piano. She's all over the place here in Lincoln. Uh, she's going to be doing a show at the PS Collective on June 5th with the uh, Omaha Arts and Entertainment Awards. 
So you can go see that if you like uh, this song that we're about to play. It's called Lobotomy. It's real sad. So Jimmy, you should appreciate this. We're we're ending Sounds with some perfect. We're ending with uh some real bleak sadness. Good. Thank you and good night.